themes? I think they're appropriate, really good. Um, you know, obviously we're thrilled to host on the women's side. I think that's a, a great recognition of the season they've had, the way they went out and challenged themselves in the non-conference. Uh, the men's side, I think, just really statistically appropriate, but it's great to see the committee do their work and, and reward the team for their accomplishments. Were you surprised at 5C? No, not really. I, I think that if you look back at the way the committee has conducted itself over the years, a lot of the metrics that uh, we lined up with were consistent with our seed. You know, there's so much noise out there in January just trying to create clicks to create controversy around where the standing of a particular team is. And I think our, our men's team was kind of a victim of that this year. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's, it's a tournament. The 5-12 is a scary seed always. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're in the tournament. We're thrilled to be there. And, and Utah's uh, been really kind to us as well. So. And the women getting the host, how huge is that, especially for the fans in the area? I think it's wonderful for our community. I mean, it's a great advantage for our team, but our community really supports women's basketball. And in a year that women's basketball has really found its transcendent moment, uh, I think it's an opportunity for Spokane to really shine out and show that uh, it can support both a men's and women's basketball regional at the same place. Yeah, I, I don't know if it makes it easier or harder. It probably is a lot more work uh, to host, but uh, work well worth it. Um, it'll be better for our campus community to be able to be a part of it. Uh, obviously traveling right, you know, spring break this week for kids, so that next week will be a little challenge to, challenging for them to turn around and travel. So uh, I think for the community, it's better to have it here for sure. Um, but for our staff, we're built for this. We're anticipating the opportunity, and I think we've got a great plan. I haven't heard yet. As the athletic director, I feel like today's got to be one heck of a day for you for both the programs. Well, my kids call it basketball Christmas. I think that's supposed to be next week. Uh, it's it's just a it's an incredibly gratifying moment, um, you know, especially coming off two really tough uh, games on Tuesday, to have both teams uh, recognized as at, at large participants in, in a, a really respectful seed line. Uh, and to be uh, a part of that and to have the, the work of our student athletes and our coaches recognized in that way, I think all of us at the university are very, very proud of them. I'm excited. I'm really happy for our team and I'm happy for Spokane and uh, our staff. We, this is something new for us. And um, new is not, sometimes we think of new as being scary and daunting and bad and new is not always bad. It's really exciting. Um, I've, I've been able to coach games in the kennel as an assistant coach, but not yet as a head coach. And uh, I just, I thought we had done a lot of work to prepare ourselves for hopefully hosting. And then it was just a little touch and go after our last game. And so I'm just happy that uh, we had scheduled how we needed to. We beat some teams that we needed to beat and that we're in a place to play these first, the first game and hopefully a second here in our own building. No, but that was a little too worrisome for me. It was, it was like those years when we're not sure if we're going to be in, and it's been a while since we've been on the bubble to get in or out. So um, me and Brenna, I think we were checking our heart rate, and they were pretty high, uh, just sitting there waiting. And, of course, it's always the last. You know, one year we were the very last team they announced, and this time, obviously, we were the very last four that they announced. And uh, But it's really fun, and I'm... I think that those are the kind of excitements and things in life that you got to just enjoy each one of them because they're special. And even though we do it often here, I think that there's people, there's many people on that board that they said this is their first time ever playing in an NCAA tournament. And uh, we're in a great place where we are not the first time we've ever played, but this, this group's first time being in the NCAA tournament together. And so hopefully we'll be able to do some good things. Well, we they we love playing here. I know that the all of our fifth years and our seniors they love being in this building and and really it, every time we step out there we're trying to prepare ourselves as if it's our last time just because life is short and we've seen uh, great players have career or season-ending injuries and so you, you never want it to be that. Um, so we try to play with that kind of enthusiasm, that joy every time we get to play here. But this is special and unique. And uh, I, I can tell you that the Trongs and Brenna and Lies, you know, those fifth year ones, they're, they're very excited to have this chance to play here again. Can you tell me the emotions that you guys dealt with after Tuesday? 
Yeah, I think we, we've kind of run the gamut. You know, we were, I think that, I know I have, and I think that they're they're mirroring some of my same emotions, whether we're having them at the same time or not, that there's some frustration, there's some, what, you know, what, what could I have done better? Um, which, as a coach, I'm saying, what could I have called better? How could I have, should I have shouted at them more? How, should I have been nicer to them? Should I have, you know, what should I have changed my demeanor? I know the players are asking, should I have punched at that time? Should I have talked more at that time? Should I have shot that one? Um, so trying to go through each play, which is probably not overly productive, but I think that's what our mind does a little bit in those those types of situations. And then over the last couple of days, as the teams have kind of settled in, and we've seen, you know, lots of teams don't win their tournament unfortunately and and the ones that people think are supposed to and so you know as you start to see that happening I think that we were able to just take some breaths we got back to practice you know we took a couple days off after the tournament and got back to practice and then we're kind of back in the driver's seat of trying to control what we can and how our practices have been and to be honest with you we've had three great practices um, and some couple really good team meetings and some honest conversations and so I, I think we've kind of gone through the whole process of frustration, sadness, of course, um, you know, a little bit of introspection. And now we're back on the way towards, all right, what's next? You're dealing with the leg off again for the second time. How, are you, you going to approach it differently? Or? Uh, you know, it doesn't, f I don't even know if it is as long. It doesn't feel as long. The last time we gave an extra day off than we would normally. So I think we had and we had them kind of close together. We had two off, two on, another one off, a couple on, another one off. And so it won't be that long. And uh, I don't think we're going to, you know, they got that extra day of rest last time. And so we'll get the normal amount of rest a few days, th you know, three or four days and then a day off and then three or four days and we're playing games. So I think it's a little bit different in that regard. But, um, you know, I like the stuff that we did. And now we have a, we've been, the last couple of days we've been scrimmaging a little bit, getting up and down a little bit. Now we have opponents to prepare for. And so that will be different. Um, that will be specific to, you know, what UC Irvine does, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and um, what their personnel is. And so that will feel a little bit different for us. When we were, th those, that week that we had off, we had a long time without an opponent to really zero in on. So I'm, I'm glad we have that now. Yeah, I just think the biggest thing that she's done, last year she started rebounding. Last year she started embracing physicality a little bit more. She's such a finesse player. Um, she started rebounding. This year I think it's the rebounding has been the biggest adjustment that she's made. She's been a great shooter her whole time here at Gonzaga. She's gotten a few more looks. Um, last year there was a lot of, you know, we were playing with seven or eight or nine, right, and all the time. And so she was just, it was, she was someone who could play long minutes for us. She was someone who knew the plays. This year we've run her a little bit at the three when we got, injured at the guard position for a couple games um so that was a, a unique thing but she's so smart and heady that she can kind of fill in at any point uh but the rebounding she's just become a consistent rebounder and between her and Vaughn um they've done such a nice job of anchoring that rebounding we have other players who are getting five or six or have had double figure min uh, rebounds Callie and Mount at different times but uh those guys have really anchored in on that and for Eliza's sake I just think that she's she's added another tool to her bag, right? She was a great shooter. She was a smart player. But now when you add the rebounding piece in there, you become a different kind of impact and you become a different, you have to guard her differently now. And I think that that's always good for us. Um, that's what I hope for, for her. I mean, she was, she was, the Trongs were coming back for whatever reasons. The Trongs were coming from back for, Brenna was coming back all along when we, when we got Brenna here, whether you guys knew it or not, she was going to play too. Um, I guess unless it was terrible, which we knew it wasn't going to be terrible. And Eliza was part, part of the reason why she came back for her fifth year was because she wanted to have this kind of experience. And so it's what we were hoping she would be able to do and our team would be able to do and the experience that she would be able to have. And I think that if you asked her, she'd probably say, that's exactly what she was hoping for. Lisa, when you get this out, you get a hose, and it kind of makes that pop, or not sting as bad, I guess you could say. Could that be turning to a positive, that the winning streak, you find out you're mortal, and now you get a restart and play the tournament? Yeah, you know, I, I think that it's certainly it's better to happen, play badly, and kind of be unsure why that happened in Vegas than it would be to do that you know, this coming week. Uh, you certainly don't want that to happen in the NCAA tournament. And uh, so I think that, I don't know if I said this to you guys at the time, but I am glad that we didn't play bad and win because then I think that that tricks you a little bit into thinking that you're, you're just doing fine. We, we, we found a way. And there are some positives. If we would have won the game, 
I would have told you all the reasons why that was great. <laughs> um, but since that's not what we're facing, I think that it, it's good and it has potential to be something that's good for us. And we, like, like I said, some of those conversations that I was talking about and some of those things that we're looking at, we, we didn't play quite like we normally do in that game. And um, hopefully there won't be a repeat of that now that we've been able to work through it and have the conversations about it. So I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to turn into a positive for us, yes. Well, I mean, we've we've played a lot of games with a short porch. They're, they're somewhere in the middle of November. It felt like we were playing, or December, we were playing game all the time. We had so many games in that time. So we're used to playing with not a lot of prep time. And we've played quality opponents. We've played a variety of different types of, of teams. We've played big teams. We've played small teams. We've played pressing teams. We've played zone teams. So I think that we have a, a diverse schedule. Um, so that's great. And then I just think, you know, we've we've grown as a team. We've been able to, teams have thrown different defenses at us as well, and we've been able to adjust uh, almost all the time. Even with even in the games that we didn't win, we were able to make adjustments at that time. And so those are just all things that prepare you for the next opponent, and whether it happens in NCAA tournament or, you know, in you know a team you haven't played yet when you get to conference or a new coach or something like that that you have, aren't as familiar with their style, I think it's all good. It just prepares you for having to make in-game adjustments, which is what you have to do in March. I know it's early. Not a lot. Um, you know, we're, we're familiar with their leading scorer is a Canadian who we're a little bit familiar with. And so, um, you know, we, we know a little bit about her, but not as much as we did when she was in high school, you know, because she's nearby. She's from up in B.C. Um, they don't make a ton of threes a game. I, you know, they, I know that they press. They, they turn teams over. They're positive on the glass. Um, and that's really the limit of, or the extent of my knowledge. We have some common opponents, and so we'll be able to reach out to them. But that sometimes that's a long time ago. When you start talking to Pacific and Eastern Washington and Pepperdine and St. Mary's, that was that was a long time ago. You, know, you think about when we played Auburn, or I mean uh, Alabama, and you're like, when did you play Alabama? Um, you know, someone just asked me, did you guys beat Auburn? And I was like, no, we never even played that team. But then I had to think about it because like, no, we played Alabama. So I think that's how some of those common opponents feel. Is it's a long time ago. They they lost to Pepperdine in their first game of the year. I think probably both of those coaches would say we were different teams at that time. So um, you know we'll have to dig into it on the film ourselves and make our own assessments. But that's just what we've seen on the stats and not a lot of other players who are very familiar with. Yeah. Um, just high on emotions. Honestly, we were just. I know uh, a lot of us were just chatting about who like who the potential four seeds are and uh they made us wait until the end so I don't know it was I'm a little speechless and just excited to get back to work yeah again I'm so excited um I'm pretty sure you remember our freshman year before COVID hit, we were supposed to host that year. Um, that was a word on the street anyways, but just to, it's kind of like a full circle, honestly. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, our family gets to come out to Spokane um, and then play in the kennel, obviously the best fans in the world. Yeah, I mean, it, it stung like any loss. Uh, any athlete could talk about the losses um, and how it, how it, you know, hurts us a little bit. But I didn't want to throw away the whole season that of achievements that we've had um, just off of one game. And I know it was, it was kind of hard because uh, we were shooting for that four seed and obviously we found out today. But just, you know, putting it past that, we didn't play a great game. Uh, and then just getting back in the lab, back to the drawing board, and regrouping, make sure that make sure that we play together the next game. Uh, nothing much. Uh, I know Coach Lisa told us that we probably have some like uh, like we share some similar opponents, but other than that, that's all I know. Yeah, I'm excited. Excited. Do yes, I do. Um, actually, we were just keeping up with the CAA, uh, and I, um, w one of our friends was playing in the championship, and uh, unfortunately, that they're not playing in the championship. But we do have some other friends that are on the other team, so I'm ex I'm excited to see them. Uh, 
Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just gonna keep it. I'm gonna just stay in the moment right now. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, my my heart's racing. Just I know we've worked really hard for this, especially with like our non-conference, um, scheduling our non-conference, and making sure we're putting our ourselves in positions that maybe we could get a higher seed. Um, last year, I think the eight nine was really tough, and anyone can say that. So, just putting ourselves in a better position to compete and maybe go further in the dance. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We played a really good game that game. One, one to remember for sure. How hard was it to be consistent? I mean, it's been a long time since someone ran the table in the WCC. That's got to be hard. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm so, I'm so proud of this team. Uh, I know it was very difficult in my other years here. We were blown out teams, but then sometimes the teams were keeping it close. But I think we were pretty consistent throughout. Um, I know that last game was, it's kind of an outlier. We had a poor shooting offense, offensive night. So, again, in the back in the back rearview mirror and just got to keep pushing forward